Have you ever taken a photo that looked good overall, but something was missing, it felt incomplete? If yes, then I have a tool for you that helped me a lot over the past few years and actually some pretty important photos. So let's get into it. I shoot travel photos and videos, like usually both together in my case. I usually put a lot of effort in it. Like at first, I usually go up for sunrise, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. or so, sometimes even earlier. And I usually have to drive like an hour or oftentimes more to get those shots. And there are those days that just suck. Like you arrive at the place, you put in all this hard work, you got up early, but then you're there and it's just not what you expected. There is no sunrise, maybe there are clouds or so, and you just can't get the shots that you want to. That's what happened to me in, I think it was 2021, where I had to get a lot of shots for a video I was working on. So I got up at 4.30 a.m., I drove about an hour to a temple here in Thailand to get all my shots, which took another two hours, and there was still the thumbnail missing. So I got about 100 shots for the thumbnail at the temple, and the best one was that. It does not look good at all in my opinion, but luckily I used the tool that I wanted to show you today and that converted this photo into that one. Now, believe me or not, but this edit only took about 30 minutes. What I essentially did there was to replace the entire sky with a nice sunrise shot. I also added those birds in the shot there and it automatically relit the scene so that it all fits to the new sky. And the tool that I used for that is called Lumina AI, which is also today's sponsor. But over all the past few years where I used it, I actually always used those paid versions and I actually recommend it a lot to friends, etc. So while this video is sponsored, these are my complete honest thoughts about it and I want to quickly show you how I use this tool and what you can do with it. And of course it was a pretty extreme example now of what you can do with it. About half the photo is not real anymore, it's all artificial. I would not do that on most of my travel shots because I still want it to look authentic. But sometimes there are those little things that I want to put inside to just make it overall look a little bit better. So let's come to the first one and that is probably my favorite tool in Lumina Neo which is to add sun rays. That's our first photo here. It's shot on Rinka Island in Indonesia, Komodo National Park, super epic place. And oh, all looks pretty good already, but of course our first step here is to like the final basic look here. Something that I like already, so I just go to the presets here and I define something that gives me a good starting point. So I like that one here, the long exposure preset. Maybe I apply a little bit less of that. And from here I do a few more tweaks like you would also do in Lightroom, etc., just to get the photo to a place where it already looks pretty good. After those initial adjustments, I do a few more tweaks. I choose the crop at first to a four x five to post on Instagram. And then there are also a few more effects. For example, I use the dramatic effect quite often in my photos that makes it quite cool looking. It has something for travel photos, I just like it. And also the mystical effect is quite nice for certain photos if I don't want to have it too sharp, but still this crispiness that comes from the dramatic effect. And there's also the glow effect, which I use at pretty much every photo, but only a slightly bit. I usually just use an amount of one, because as you can see, the difference even at one is already huge. It makes everything pop a bit more. The colors are a bit nicer. You can also select Orton effect in that tool. It works a bit better for certain pictures. I actually like how it works here but I think it is better in this picture if I use it a bit later because what I want to do at first now is to add my beloved sun rays. So let's do that. So you just click on the sun rays effect, drag the amount slider to the right until you see the sun rays. Then you click place sun center and you drag the center point of the sun to wherever it looks good. So in our example here up. And from there you have a few more adjustments available. You can choose the sun rays length, the penetration. You can set up how the sun should look like or the point of the sun and the rays as well. Also the sun warms and sun rays warms is really important to match it to the rest of the, your photo. So I just play around with those sliders always until it looks good to me and yeah, now it looks pretty good I'm happy with it already, but now it's time to add the glow effect and now I added that later as you can see Because it makes the sun rays glow as well 
and I find it with that Orton effect here when I choose that on the type looks so good for this shot it gives it kind of a dreamy look that this is the one that I want to go for and now now you can see before and after it looks so much better in my opinion and we didn't change too much in the image we only faked those sun rays which you would get naturally if there would be some dust or so flying around in the cave but oftentimes you just don't have that so this is the only way to get those effects. So let's come to the next photo. My first step as well was to choose a basic look of it already and do my basic adjustments. Did a little bit more here. I chose a little gradient mask here and put the exposure down to darken the foreground here a little bit to drive more attention to the center of the frame. But now from here, what I want to show you is the atmosphere effect. Now the atmosphere effect basically analyzes the depth of your shot. And based on that, it is possible for it to place fog or mist or whatever you want to have there into the shot anyway. You can't really control where exactly, but usually it gets it quite right. And in this shot here, as you can see, we have this misty morning already. There's mist everywhere. Now by adding a little bit of atmosphere in there, you notice before and after it makes it so much better. It gives it a certain mood because the fog is now also here in between those mountains. Coming to the next photo, I was already pretty happy with it straight out of camera. Just the sky should be a little bit more teal instead of that usual blue, so I changed that. And from here, I want to show you a new tool which is called Magic Light, and this is one of their extension packs. Now, there's already a little bit of a glow effect on those lamps, but enhancing that a little bit would really enhance the shot. And to enhance this photo, I will use two tools. At first, there is Magic Light, which straight out of the box by raising the intensity this slider at least on this photo does not do such a good job. I think it just has a problem with those Fujifilm RAWs or so usually it works a bit better. But by adjusting the settings a little bit, you can see the before and after here. It makes the lamps glow a bit more here, which looks pretty nice. And then I also go into the glow effect setting again and add a little bit more glow to further enhance that. Now when we look at the before and after, it actually looks really nice as well. It's not really AI here. Maybe you could even do it more in Photoshop, but considering that I can do those things in just a few seconds is actually quite impressive. So Lumina Neo can do a lot to enhance your photos with certain effects, but it can also improve your photos in other ways. For example, I had this shot here recently of a waterfall, which was super far away. So I even had to crop in a lot and it's not sharp at all. And if you encounter situations like that, where you maybe want to print a photo or you want to include it in a video or so, and therefore it should have higher resolution, then you can use the extension called Super Sharp. Also just play a bit around with the settings and it makes your image sharper, but not in a way how classical sharpening works, but in a way that it uses AI to actually generate pixels. So you end up with a higher resolution and therefore a better looking photo. And in this photo here, it actually made it look a bit sharper, like you can see on the leaves, etc. definitely looks better. So I really love Lumina AI and what you can do with it, but there's also the question like, should you actually do that? Because with travel photos especially, you also want to capture how a place actually is and not how it can be. And I think it just depends on the photo itself. Because for example, when I have a YouTube thumbnail and I use a lot of AI to edit that photo, so it's not really real anymore, but it gets the click and I deliver on the promise of the thumbnail, then I, for example, think it's totally fine because a thumbnail is overall only there to get the click. And as long as the video is actually good and I deliver on the promise in the video, then I think it's just fine to even completely artificially make a thumbnail. I mean, many people use Photoshop as well, but when it comes to tra actual travel photography, where you actually want to show off a place, I think be a bit conservative with it, use it to make the photos a bit better looking, but not to like change the reality, but instead to enhance what's already there and to emphasize certain points of your photos. So I hope you learned something today. And if you're interested in Lumina Neo, you will find the link to it in the description below. Aside from that, we're usually talking more about video stuff here on this channel. So if you're interested in that as well, consider subscribing and I see you in my upcoming videos.